Abbas II Helmi Bey was the last Khediva of Egypt and Sudan, ruling from January 8, 1892 to December 19, 1914. In 1914, after the Ottoman Empire joined the Central Powers in World War I, the nationalist Khediva was removed by the British, then ruling Egypt, in favor of his more pro-British uncle. Hussein Kamal, marking the de jure end of Egypt's four-century era as a province of the Ottoman Empire, which had begun in 1517. Abbas II, the great-great-grandson of Muhammad Ali, was born in Alexandria, Egypt on July 14, 1874. In 1887 he was ceremonially circumcised together with his younger brother Muhammad Ali Tufik. The festivities lasted for three weeks and were carried out under great pomp. As a boy he visited the United Kingdom, and he had a number of British tutors in Cairo including a governess who taught him English. In a profile of Abbas II, the boy's annual, Shams, gives a lengthy account of his education. His father established a small school near the Abdon Palace in Cairo where European, Arab and Ottoman masters taught Abbas and his brother Muhammad Ali Tufik. An American officer in the Egyptian army took charge of his military training. He attended school at Lausanne, Switzerland. Then, at the age of 12 he was sent to the Haxia School in Geneva, in preparation for his entry into the Theresianum in Vienna. In addition to Arabic and Ottoman Turkish, he had good conversational knowledge of English, French, and German. Abbas II succeeded his father, Tufik Pasha, as Khediva of Egypt and Sudan on January 8, 1892. He was still in college in Vienna when he assumed the throne of the Khedivate of Egypt upon the sudden death of his father. He was barely of age according to Egyptian law normally 18 in cases of succession to the throne. For some time he did not cooperate very cordially with the British, whose army had occupied Egypt in 1882. As he was young and eager to exercise his new power, he resented the interference of the British agent and consul general in Cairo, Sir Evelyn Baring, later made Lord Cromer. At the outset of his reign, Khediva Abbas II surrounded himself with a coterie of European advisers who opposed the British occupation of Egypt and Sudan and encouraged the young Khediva to challenge Cromer by replacing his ailing prime minister with an Egyptian nationalist. At Cromer's behest, Lord Rosebery, the British Foreign Secretary, sent a boss to a letter stating that the Khediva was obliged to consult the British consul on such issues as cabinet appointments. In January 1894 a boss too made an inspection tour of Sudanese and Egyptian frontier troops stationed near the southern border, the Mahdists being at the time still in control of the Sudan. At Wadi Halfa the Khediva made public remarks disparaging the Egyptian army units commanded by British officers. The British commander of the Egyptian army, Sir Herbert Kitchener, immediately threatened to resign. Kitchener further insisted on the dismissal of a nationalist undersecretary of war appointed by a boss to and that an apology be made for the Khediva's criticism of the army and its officers. By 1899 he had come to accept British counsels. Also in 1899, British diplomat Alfred Mitchell Innes was appointed Under Secretary of State for Finance in Egypt, and in 1900 Abbas II paid a second visit to Britain, during which he said he thought the British had done good work in Egypt, and declared himself ready to cooperate with the British officials administering Egypt and Sudan. He gave his formal approval for the establishment of a sound system of justice for Egyptian nationals, a significant reduction in taxation, increased affordable and sound education. The inauguration of the substantial irrigation works such as the Aswan Low Dam and the Ashut Barrage, and the reconquest of Sudan. He displayed more interest in agriculture than in statecraft. His farm of cattle and horses at Kuh, near Cairo, was a model for agricultural science in Egypt, and he created a similar establishment at Muntaza, just east of downtown Alexandria. He married the Princess Iqbal Hanum and had several children. Muhammad Abdul Manaim, the heir apparent, was born on February 20, 1899. Abbas II with King George V in 1911 Although Abbas II no longer publicly opposed the British, he secretly created, supported and sustained the Egyptian nationalist movement, which came to be led by Mustafa Kamil. He also funded the anti-British newspaper al Muwa. As Kamil's thrust was increasingly aimed at winning popular support for a nationalist political party, Khediva Abbas publicly distanced himself from the nationalists. Their demand for a constitutional government in 1906 was rebuffed by Abbas II, and the following year he formed the National Party, led by Mustafa Kamil Pasha, to counter the Umar party of the Egyptian moderates. However, in general, he had no real political power. 
When the Egyptian army was sent to fight Abd al Rahman al Mahdi in Sudan in 1896, he only found out about it because the Austro Hungarian Archduke Francis Ferdinand was in Egypt and told him after being informed of it by a British army officer. His relations with Cromer's successor, Sir Eldon Gorst, however, were excellent, and they cooperated in appointing the cabinets headed by Boutrous Ghali in 1908 and Mohammed Said in 1910 and in checking the power of the National Party. The appointment of Kitchener to succeed Gorst in 1912 displeased Abbas too, and relations between the Khadiva and the British deteriorated. Kitchener, who exiled or imprisoned the leaders of the National Party, often complained about that wicked little Khadiva and wanted to depose him. On July 25, 1914, at the onset of World War I, Abbas II was in Constantinople and was wounded in his hands and cheeks during a failed assassination attempt. On November 5, 1914 when Great Britain declared war on Turkey, he was accused of deserting Egypt by not promptly returning home. The British also believed that he was plotting against their rule, as he had attempted to appeal to Egyptians and Sudanese to support the Central Powers against the British. So when the Ottoman Empire joined the Central Powers in World War I, the United Kingdom declared Egypt a sultanate under British protection on December 18, 1914 and deposed Abbas II. Painting commemorating Abbas II's 1909 Hajj pilgrimage. Including his portrait on the left during the war, Abbas II supported the Ottomans, including leading an attack on the Suez Canal. He was replaced by the British by his uncle Hussein Kamal from 1914 to 1917, with the title of Sultan of Egypt. Hussein Kamal issued a series of restrictive orders to strip Abbas II of property in Egypt and Sudan and forbade contributions to him. These also barred Abbas from entering Egyptian territory and stripped him of the right to sue in Egyptian courts. This did not prevent his progeny, however, from exercising their rights. Abbas II finally accepted the new order on May 12, 1931 and formally abdicated. He retired to Switzerland, where he wrote the Anglo-Egyptian settlement. He died at Geneva on December 19, 1944, aged 70, 30 years to the day after the end of his reign as Khadiva. His first marriage in Cairo on February 19, 1895 was to Iqbal Hanum, and they had six children, two sons and four daughters, his second marriage in Subuklu. Turkey on March 1, 1910 was to Hungarian noblewoman Mariana Torek de Sendru, who took the name Zubaid Kabat-in-Han. They divorced in 1913 without issue. Thanks for watching.